Welcome to building community in your classes. Community is defined by a feeling of fellowship with others as the result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. But what does that mean in a classroom? In 1987, Chickering and Gamson developed their seven principles for good practice in undergraduate education. It starts with encouraging contact between students and faculty, develops reciprocity and cooperation among students, uses active learning techniques, gives prompt feedback, emphasizes time on task, communicates high expectations, and respects diverse talents and ways of learning. You'll notice that the first two principles of Chickering and Gammon are encourages contact between students and faculty and develops reciprocity and cooperation among students. This is part of what we mean by community. Community is built on relationships. The essential elements of a community as defined in the realm of psychology are membership, connection, influence, and needs fulfillment. In the context of a university learning community, Rove has identified two key elements, learning and connectedness, upon which to grow the elements of a strong community. So let's look at why this community is important. It fills students' needs for belonging because they know that they can both contribute to the community's success and benefits from its rewards. It is shown to increase student identification with the school and benefits persistence and retention. A study out of Mount Mercy shows that students with high levels of collaborative learning are more likely to re-enroll in their second year of college than were students with low levels of collaborative learning. It leads to increased student achievement. The impact of creating a community-oriented classroom climate was documented by Dwyer, who found that fostering a positive climate and sense of community for students in educational settings has been linked with retention and academic success. McKinney, McKinney, and Franiuk found that this sense of community in turn has been shown to relate not only to students' perceptions of their performance and satisfaction with the course, but also with measures of their actual performance. Those students whose sense of community scores were the highest showed the most improvement between the first and last exam. It leads to perceived student satisfaction, encourages students to help one another, facilitates effective collaborative learning, and encourages communication after the program or course is completed. Intentionally building community within your classroom is a valuable endeavor and can enhance the climate of your classroom and learning and experience of your students. Whether your class is large, small, blended, or fully online, it is possible to strategically foster a strong community within your learning space. Developing a sense of community should be an important part of the course design and class activities. Think of a time when you met an expert in your field or one of your idols. If they asked your opinion on something or told you your idea was valid, how would you feel? Amazing, right? This is the same reason why your students want you to care about them and their ideas. And this again is done through community. Now we're looking at two types of community here in the rest of the presentation. And one is faculty to student, the other is student to student. So faculty to student relies on your relationship with those students. You want to be known as the person to go to for your expertise, but they also need to understand that they can contribute as well and that you want them to contribute as well. Being open and clear in your communication and your expectation also helps to build that community. You want to be excited and you want them to care about their learning, right? So with student to student, that's the relationships that they're gonna build within the classroom itself and with each other. So let's look at tips for building that community from a faculty to student perspective. And this is one of my favorite quotes from a movie. Whatever else anything is, it ought to begin by being personal. So that's my biggest tip, be personal. Tell your students about you, not only where you went to school, but you as a person. What do you value? Who are you? Why did you become a professor? Why are you glad they took your class? And what do you hope that they'll take away from this experience? It allows them to look for common ground or similarity. 
Another strategy is to get them to tell you why they're in this class to begin with, what they hope to get out of it, because that community is a two-way street. It's not just you, them learning about you, it's you also learning about them. Be passionate, always be passionate. Being passionate about your subject matter comes through to your students and in turn makes their experience more fun and more meaningful. If you're passionate about something, others will be more engaged in the topic and want to know more. This also helps students connect with you and the material because they can see why they're there and why they should care. I recently did an observation for a faculty member and the number one thing students said is that they love how passionate he is about the topic and it makes it their favorite class. Here's another tip, regardless of the type of class you have. These are bank relationship points, and I got this idea from Kelly White in teacher education. Each class, you ask one student to come early and one student to stay late, and just chat with them. Get to know them. See how the class is going, what they're up to. This way, you have time with each student as long as your classes are 25 or less. If you have more, Consider having Zoom days where students are invited to come visit you on Zoom. This is a time where you ask them to come as opposed to an office hour where they choose to come. Again, even if it's on Zoom, it's your opportunity to get to know them more deeply. Make students part of the process. Co-create expectations. On the first day of class, facilitate a discussion with your students specifically to identify positive behaviors and expectations that will help students feel safe accepted and valued. Consider creating a classroom guidelines list to post in your Oaks classroom that you and your students can refer to during the term. These items may be of even greater importance to fully online classes as netiquette and engaging in a more formal academic environment online may be new to your students. Whichever method you choose, the important thing is, is to have them be part of that process. Use students' names. I know that this is hard, but it gives the person a sense of belonging and importance. You took time to learn their name. That's how they feel, and that's exciting for a student. This also helps the other students in the class learn their classmates' names and helps build that student-to-student -student community as well. Again, it makes it personal. Even if there are 90 people in the class, there's all sorts of strategies and tips that I know you know for coming up with everybody's names. So make sure to use those. Another cool way to build community, especially between you and the student, is to allow the students to incorporate their life experiences into their assignments. Allow them to use their own experiences and encourage students to explain a topic as viewed through their own lens. Create assessments and assignments that allow them to apply their learning to real life situations. Setting the stage for community building. We're gonna start with explaining why community is important in this class, why you value it and why they should too. Establish a growth mindset and welcome mistakes as part of the learning process. And model that by making mistakes yourself or allowing the mistakes that you do make to slide, saying, ooh, that was wrong, let me fix that. Or can somebody in the class look that up and tell me what the right answer is? It's important for them to see you not only as the expert, but as human as well. Be mindful that you're asking the same challenging questions or interactions of all students. Look for your own internal biases and find a way to address these in order to form a welcoming environment. And be mindful of your graphics and images that you're using in your presentations. You need to make sure that your students see themselves in your presentation, in your books, in your materials that you're using. These are all ways to set that stage for community building. Next, let's look at how we can build some community student to student. Help your students find commonality. This is also key in diversity and inclusion. One way to find commonality is to embed activities that promote learning about one another in classroom activities. Consider small group activities, paired activities such as Think Pair Shares, and using technology to facilitate collaboration and feedback with an audience response system or something easy like Poll Everywhere. My advice is start small. Consider adding a brief two-minute buzz group to your class to break up the lecture 
and allow students to discuss their conclusions or predictions with their classmates. Or you can consider an exit ticket, giving students the opportunity to analyze their learning and provide you with feedback on their learning. Consider using a brainstorming session. Anything really that gets your students talking to one another, either in small groups or large groups. Here's a few ideas that you can use. One is called accountability buddies. Now, this is a weird word, I know, but it's basically getting your students to pair up within the class. You are my buddy, and if I can't make it to class, I contact you first for the notes or whatever to find out what happened in class. We also can do projects together, we can study together, whatever it is, but we have a buddy that helps hold us accountable. You can add the activity feed in Oaks. Now we know that the announcements area is faculty to student, one way only, but the activity feed can also be added to that home page, and it allows students to communicate with you and with one another right there on the front page. And it's much more organic than the more static discussion boards. Using icebreakers. Icebreakers are great any time of the year. We sometimes will use them at the beginning of the semester, maybe our first day for students to get to know each other, but it's really good to bring them in throughout the semester. Every Maybe before you're gonna do a large project, have another icebreaker, or just halfway through, throw one in, make sure everybody's getting to know each other. And it also sort of reinforces the fact that they had met before, but maybe hadn't really gotten to talk to one another again since then. Allow for interesting collaboration. And by interesting collaboration, I mean something that makes them think a little bit. Often I've noticed that faculty will do a think pair share or something that is a group activity, but the students don't really need to be in a group. They really could have done this on their own. Make sure that those activities that you do design for group work are actually, that a group is actually needed to complete them or to complete them in a better way, right? So make sure that your collaboration activities aren't just collaboration for the sake of collaboration. And again, active learning together. The active learning is important, but when you do it as a group or as a partnership, you learn from one another and it not only builds community, but it actually increases your ability to learn. Here are just a few activities that can sort of get you into that active learning together mode where um, that active learning is actually really required. Now this is the end of this presentation, but in the description of this video, you will find a link to this presentation, which contains many more slides. It contains lots of resources and different tips and tricks and things that you may want to go out and explore more. So I hope this has helped you a little bit to get on board with building that community in your classrooms.